Storm Financial Group was an investment advice company owned by the husband and wife team Emmanuel and Julie Casamatis. It operated on the basis of a single model, the Storm model, rather than tailoring advice to the individual investor. The idea was, allegedly, that they would find and only advise the right type of investors for their model. Their model was based on investors taking on large debts and then using that debt to invest in indexed funds on the stock market, expecting that the returns on those indexed funds would be higher than the interest payments on the loans. There's nothing inherently wrong with that type of investment strategy. People borrow to invest all the time. Unfortunately, evidence indicated that Storm was pushing their financial products on unsophisticated investors with few assets and limited income, including older investors who may not be able to invest in a long enough time frame to handle heavy losses if there was an economic downturn. Storm also charged massive fees. When the global financial crisis came along in 2008, the Australian share market tumbled and Storm clients were required to raise additional cash to keep their loans afloat. Storm itself was also heavily in debt for investments and had to pay similar calls on its margin lending. There were suggestions that the Commonwealth Bank demanded these payments before they were properly due. One way or another, though, Storm Financial ended up under administration in 2009. Investors, many of whom were just normal retail investors, lost a fortune. ASIC took action against Mr and Mrs Casamatis on a number of grounds, one of which was that they'd failed in their duty as directors to Storm Financial. Justice Edelman said, The Casamatis' role and responsibilities in Storm were so significant and the contraventions were sufficiently serious that their conduct ought not fairly be excused. They were responsible for establishing the Storm model which provided for double gearing for thousands of clients. They exercised an extraordinary level of control and power over the storm business and should reasonably have known that the consequences of inappropriate advice to any class of client could reasonably be expected to be catastrophic for storm to whom their duties were owed. From this case, we learn that even if the directors of a company are also its only shareholders, the directors still owe a duty of care to the company. Mm-hmm.